Welcome back to Golden Rule Radio, our weekly summation of the precious metals markets. Today is February 22nd, and I'm going to jump right into gold since it's up about $10 since our show last week. And it really is meeting the resistance that Robert and Miles have both pointed out. It needs to push above 1245 to to signify a continued rise. And that being said, I mean, we're not getting spoiled, uh, are we? It's up seven and a quarter percent this year. And that's it's lagging the other metals. Well, I'll tell you what is spoiling me is my silver up about 13 and a half percent so far this year. We had some resistance levels drawn on the charts for the last couple of weeks and showed that stair step compression up. We have come against the first one at 1815. So I'm really hoping for a pullback here. I am too. And I cautioned an investor the other day that was looking at it as an investment rather than how we advise they look at it. And that being said, I said, don't buy above 18. If that's the case, we do expect to see that. And Platinum, I mean, after exceeding last year's high, we're finally starting to see it signal a brief respite as well. And we've been encouraging a platinum position for weeks, really, and on this show and, and in the office. And so I'm hoping for a bit of a pullback that allows us a cheaper price. Well, and speaking of platinum, talking about its sister metal, palladium, which I think is the chart to be paying attention mm-hmm. to right now in the precious metals. We talked about the head and shoulders pattern, which didn't hold However, we did have that compression move up and palladium did fail to break the new high. So we could see that trailing back down as it already has started to do so. And if palladium continues down, platinum should follow and maybe it'll bring gold and silver with it. In the meantime, we really have seen a consolidation sideways in the metals here. Gold at around 1235 to 1240 has met resistance. Silver at that 1810 to 1815 platinum palladium we're talking about. So we're really anticipating watching the metals move from this point of resistance. Sideways consolidation in charts is always the fun part because it does tell you where momentum is going to go from here. And that's all we want our listeners to understand is in the precious metals market, we're looking for entry opportunities or changes that we can make with our products that allow us extra ounces. And we'll get into specific recommendations later that that touch on that, Miles. And in terms of other markets, we're going to we're going to skip over the Dow a little bit today, just briefly touch on it for us and not much new news. Dow Industrials keep climbing. The transports are stuck in a trading pattern sideways, uh, just like the metals are, which to me means we're just looking at a Wall Street driven move up. So you're talking speculation, not actually based on good things like productivity and sales. I think speculation on how some of the business tax laws may change over the first you know, 12, 18, 24 months of our new president. And the projected economic impact that he can actually have, which we discussed in detail a few weeks ago. Exactly. Well, speaking for Robert, he's been calling for resistance on the dollar index at 102, and we have seen support at the 100 level. We have bounced up off of that, and we're pushing back towards the 102. I know that speaking for him, again, he believes that that resistance point will hold. However, Miles, add to that, if you will, in terms of where your opinion comes in. I know on our show a couple weeks ago, we placed some bets as to where the dollar was going. I said up, you guys said down. So I'm still arguing up. I think that we are going to push through 102. If we push through 102, I think we're definitely above 104. So the push down to 100 was more of a technical sell-off than it was a fundamental. That's my thought. Yeah, exactly. I appreciate that. Central bank-wise, big news. Not a recent meeting, but a recent comment and series of comments really from Alan Greenspan, the former Fed chairman, and it's just really eye-opening to me that you can have a former Fed chairman speak so bullishly about gold, and really, I wish we could have him on the program because as we've been alluding to over the last few weeks, it's the fundamentals that drive the, the primary purpose for buying. Yeah, Greenspan's article this past month in the Gold Investor newsletter that we get uh, was very eye-opening because it's reminiscent of old Greenspan, 1960s, 1970s, and Rand Greenspan. He wasn't brainwashed while in office. He just was suppressed, I guess you'd say, and now he's coming out and being able to speak freely. What's the old power corrupts, absolute power corrupts, absolutely. And maybe we give the guy too hard of a time because it is probably the hardest job next to maybe being president that you can have here in the U.S. is controlling our monetary policy. Well, I think that's right. And and he's not a string puller anymore, but his opinion does matter. And he, quote, says, I view gold as the primary global currency. I mean, that goes hand in hand with the fundamental reason for why we recommend listeners buy physical gold. Well, and he further discusses it's the only currency that doesn't have counterparty risk. 
its counterparty risk is that it's a element on the periodic table. I mean, there's no credit, there's no government backing it. It's just what it is. That's right. And and talking about dollar devaluation, another quote of his, significant increases in inflation will ultimately increase the price of gold. We've talked a lot in the last couple of weeks, again, about the potential for inflation. Miles, I know you're arguing for a stronger dollar, but again, we have said that just because the dollar is increasing on the dollar index does not mean that the purchasing power of the dollar is increasing. And our listeners need to understand that over time, the one thing you can bank on is currency devaluation across the board. Exactly. That's the most important thing here. I'm not arguing for the dollar getting stronger as itself. I've argued for the dollar getting stronger against, say, the euro, which has taken a beating over the last 10 years. Thank you. And that's why gold is at 1230 an ounce now at an index of 102, whereas the last time we were at an index of 102 14 years ago, gold was down in the 400s. So the real concern we have is what we call stagflation, which is the idea that inflation is used simply to keep the market at a stable level. So you're having additional cost and cost of living through inflation, but the market remains stagnant. And that's why we continue with our clients, with our listeners to argue for gold being an insurance policy. And Greenspan comes in this week and says the exact same thing. Investment in gold now is insurance. It's not for short-term gain, but for long-term protection. So we had a comment on YouTube last week to that very point. You know, why bother going through the technical side of precious metals when you should just own gold for insurance? And I think that's a darn good point. And I think Alan Greenspan agrees with you. That's right. And the central bank can only do so much. You know, they are in a constant state of experimenting. And he says again here, not to, to overquote him, but the very worst situation for a central banker is an unstable fiscal system such as we are experiencing today. In those unstable fiscal systems, uncertain economic times, in devaluing currency environments, it's the reason that you own gold. And the reason that we own silver is to increase our ounces of gold. And all we're trying to do here when we look at some of these charts is just try to get you a few more ounces for a cheaper price. So that really transitions right into this week's recommendation, and that is call us. And I know that sounds cliche, but the reason I say that is we've touched lightly on silver, the white metals. Call us and we'll walk you through how ratio trading accumulates ounces in your favor. How certain products can actually lead to an opportunity for premium swapping. We will walk you through the net gains, the tax benefits of a loss, and how those strategies over time allow you exponential growth on the physical ounces in your physical metals portfolio. As Tori said, we'd love to talk to you guys. You can reach us at 800 525 9556. Again, that's 1 800 525 9556. And send us your listener questions and make sure to follow us on Twitter at ICA Gold. Subscribe to us too on the YouTube channel by clicking the subscribe button below this video. And make sure to catch this week's episode of the McIlvaney Weekly Commentary, where Dave and Kevin interviewed Bert Doman, author of The Wellington Letter, a much deeper discussion about what Tori and I touched on today. Tori, Robert, and Miles, thank you for listening, and we'll see you next week. 